Hello chess friends and welcome to Zadov chess channel and welcome back to our Gary Kasparov series. So in this series we're following Gary Kasparov's life and his chess career and we're back now in the 1985 World Chess Championship between Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov. We're now in the game 19. Uh, before this game 19 uh, Gary Kasparov had a one point lead. Still uh, Anatoly Karpov had this draw odds. I'm repeating myself again. 24 games have been played in the super final and if the result would have ended in a 12 to 12 result then Anatoly Karpov would have stayed World Champion Chess because he had this simply uh, draw odds that was simply the rule of the super final. Let's keep now to the game 19. I think it was a very very interesting game and it shows really how you can in one move mess up your whole position when you, in one move you can really uh, lose the game strategically of course there are some tactical ideas uh, to get back into the game but it's really hard uh, to see that and as i said in one particular moment I, i'll show you what's all about what was the strategical mistake by one of these players and how it, it's really really um, hard to get back into the game then afterwards so uh, here Kasparov opened with the move d4. Karpov plays knight to f6. Uh, we have c4, e6, knight to c3 and after bishop to b4 we have the Nimzo Indian defense on the board. The main strategic goal of the Nimzo Indian is to mess up here the pawn structure with uh, bishop takes c3, b takes c3 and after that uh, black is building then a fortress on dark squares because uh, if when you give up your bishop pair in an early stage of the game when you give up the bishop uh, for a knight at least you're giving up the bishop for something uh we're giving up the bishop to mess up as we said the pawn structure of white then uh it's very important to keep the position compact on that squares uh where you have uh, with on which you have lost your bishop so here i think it's a pragmatic idea many times for black and the ninja indian is really one of the uh, most often played uh defenses from from black perspective against d4 and here uh, gary kasparov plays a calm move knight to f3 i like to call it calm move because many times in, in the name so you see that white is challenging the, the bishop with the move a3 and uh, here it's not the case because it's like gary kasparo saying to karpov okay if you want to take out the knight on c3 at least i'm not challenging you if you want to mess up my pawn structure i cannot prevent it anymore you just take and we'll see uh, how how am i going to use my bishop here in the continuation of the game so after move knight to f3 we have knight to e4 immediately by karpov queen to c2 uh, protecting the knight on c3 f5 supporting the outpost of, of the knight on e4 we have g3 it's really the best way here to proceed with the move g3 because if you play e3 positionally it's not so good of course you have a good diagonal here for the bishop you can maybe use this diagonal bishop to d3 bishop to e2 is a possibility but uh the problematic uh, the problems here are of course of the dark school bishop you cannot get uh, back into the game with your dark school bishop anymore that's the main issue i think uh, here it's a better way to play the move g3 like uh, Kar uh, kasparov did here we have knight to c6 bishop to g2 and now castling and now castling so now after the move castling we don't have any more the pin situation the uh, knight is not pinned anymore so that's why Karpov takes out the, the knight bishop takes c3 and here after b, b takes c3 we have knight to a5 attacking the pawn on uh, c4 is a very very often played idea from black's perspective and i think from this point on we'll see how well prepared kasparov won the, uh, was in this game he played here the move c5 and c5 of course creates the space advantage one of the best way is to break the space advantage here uh Karpo played the move d6 but now comes a very very interesting move c4 and i think this move has been really sort of a home homemade preparation here by um, Kasparov. After move c4, it seems so that you could actually take your d takes c5. But the problem is now this move, bishop to a3. Still, it's an equal game. Uh, black could maybe go rook to e8, knight to e4, uh, knight to e5, attacking the, the knight on e4 could be a possibility. And after d takes c5, bishop to e4, f takes e4, and now queen to e4. In this scenario, white is maybe slightly better, but I simply like this activity of white uh, maybe even the best way here is to proceed with knight to c6 uh, simply forcing a trade uh, further trades of pieces knight to c6 b takes c6 queen to c6 it's not so good because bishop to d7 could happen uh, you have to retreat with the queen and then uh, black could search maybe for some ideas to get this long diagonal but uh, one of the best ways as i said is simply not uh, not to take maybe play something like f4 here uh, it's one possible line i wanted to show you what are the problems uh, of this opening line after move f4 uh, white could have maybe a space advantage could then afterwards also take out uh, the pawn on d4 
but still this uh, long diagonal is also something that uh, white should take care of so as i said this would be an equal game uh, but as i said it was probably uh a homemade prep here by by anatolic uh, by gary kasparov because he simply left his c5 pawn hanging that's the most important thing and uh, with the opportunities to play the move bishop to a3 so here uh, b6 uh karpov is challenging the c5 uh, further we have uh, bishop to d2 attacking the knight we have knight to d2 we have knight to d2 and now uh the long diagonals open so you have to react and here comes really already the uh, the critical moment of the game here karpov makes a huge huge positional blunder and this move really surprised me as the karpov was really a positional beast he was really so well prepared when it comes to uh positions when the, when it comes to positional understanding here he played a huge huge positional blunder d5 and this move allows now i think uh Kari kasparov a very very comfortable game one the best way here is to proceed with bishop to b7 bishop to b7 is an equal game i think a uh, bishop takes bishop ta uh, knight takes b7 and maybe c6 could be uh, the opportunity of course white has the space advantage on the sixth rank but still uh with knight to a5 we can counter attack and then uh white could proceed uh, here with the move d5 and then queen to f6 okay at least black could proceed then with, with the move e5 and then could create here a very nice uh pawn storm on the king side that was maybe uh the um the opportunity for black but karpov makes really huge positional blunder he plays the move d5 and this move really locks the life for bishop of blacks that's the main issue here uh when it comes uh to po to this relation between bishops and pawns when you have for instance a life for bishop you want to have many of your pawns on dark squares and when you have a life for bishop here like back black, black you don't want to have of course your pawns on life squares because uh the then the bishop is blocked out then the bishop is only used in order to defend your pawns here Gary Kasparov uses this moment immediately c takes d5 and after e takes d5 you see now these are two weaknesses the weak f5 pawn the weak d5 pawn and you could protect it but maybe with uh with the move e6 bishop to e6 is a possibility but here also a very very uh nice square for the knight knight to e5 is also a long-term plan so when it comes to i think bishop's activity white is much much better knight activity knight is also much much better so as i said here went already something wrong for for carpo here after move d5 we said c takes d5 e takes d5 e3 bishop to e6 okay the bishop is there but it's only part of the pawn chain look look at this bishop it's really like a pawn almost here so queen to c3 uh, preventing some b takes c5 ideas then you lose the knight so here uh rook to f7 uh was played by by karpov which was a new slight inaccuracy uh by karpov a better way simply to proceed with g5 you have to use now this moment you have to break the position with the move f4 uh because that's the only way to make something to happen out of this game because the pawn structure in the center is blocked uh it's not so easy also for white uh to activate some some more pieces g5 here maybe knight to f3 would be possible but now knight to c4 maybe rook to d1 and activating also the rook and trying maybe bishop to f1 uh, f1 to get rid of this very annoying knight on c4 this could be an idea but as i said at least with g5 we're threatening some f4 ideas queen to f6 maybe uh, getting uh, some kind of an activity on, on the f file here rook to f7 it's simply too slow because uh, here rook to c1 uh, was played by uh, kasparov also for kasparov would have been probably better if you would have played here the move knight to f3 immediately uh, taking over uh, on uh, on around the square e5 knight to c4 maybe knight to e5 again knight takes d takes e5 and now after rook to c8 maybe something like rook to c1 you see white is still much much better but at least uh, uh, black is here sort of a simplification black can search maybe uh, for trades of pieces for uh, really simplified lines as i said still white is better but uh, after the move rook to f7 here uh, gary kasparov didn't react correctly he played rook to c1 of course he has some ideas uh, on the c file but it's not so easy to make that happen because Kas karpov played already this rook on the seventh rank and is protecting also the weak c7 square so here uh, rook to b8 
again g5 uh, is really the only way to make something happen again karpov didn't play it he played now rook to b8 and now rook from a to b1 we have rook to e7 and now a4 uh, blocking the further progress potential progress of, of blacks in long terms of course not immediately uh, b5 could be a possibility maybe a6 b5 still you have some worries so with your knights the knight is a little bit out of game uh that's the problem of, of black black has really passive minor pieces on the board the knight is not good the bishop on e6 is not good so that's why a much much better position for for uh, for kasparov bishop to f7 we have bishop to f1 uh h6 bishop to d3 attacking this uh f5 weakness uh, we have queen to d7 queen to c2 and now bishop to e6 you see this bishop is only used as a defender of the f5 and now bishop to b5 again knight to f3 again this move is many times suggested by the engine knight to f3 simply uh taking over here getting this knight on a very active score maybe again knight to c4 but actually if the knight comes now on c4 i think uh, white can even immediately take out the knight after d takes c4 although you have this uh, light score weaknesses but then again get really an active knight knight to e5 uh here queen to e8 and we can take here if you try to attack the light core weaknesses knight to e5 and after bishop to d5 queen to d1 is still a possibility we can still play f3 locking the light course if black for instance doesn't trade off uh, the queens f3 is the possibility and still i think we have a great protection uh you cannot take here on on the c file your rook is hanging so with the move rook to f7 uh black has also lost the rook connection which is also a very important stage of the chess game so uh, after queen to d1 again white is much much better but okay here Bukar, uh, kasparov tried bishop to b5 it wasn't the best of moves but it was still so, uh, some kind of an attack queen to d8 and now rook to d1 uh, we have g5 finally but it's a little bit too late and now knight to f3 you see um, after a couple of moves uh, both of them are playing the suggested moves by the engine uh, knight to f3 finally getting use of the e5 square we have now rook to g7 and now knight to e5 and now comes f4 here we have uh, bishop to f1 uh, by by Kasparov uh, here queen to f6 and you see finally uh, Karpov is also activating some pieces still is a better position for white but I like now at least some kind of a counter attack here by black we have bishop to g2 and now rook to d8 and here rook to f8 is probably better i'm not sure what was the idea about this move rook to d8 for karpov if you have attacked already here the king side with f4 and similar stuff you have to i think activate this rook toward the f file you have to make something happen immediately uh, you don't have time to to lose now it it is really time to attack this position still e4 could happen uh this was i think the best way here for for white to defend this position after d takes e4 maybe bishop to e4 and now bishop to f5 would be sort of a simplified line for black i think after this one Kar karpov could have hold on to this position but as i said he lost again sort of a tempo rook to d8 not the best of moves and now e4 by Kasparov we have d takes e4 and now bishop to e4 rook to e7 and now uh here uh, Gasparov goes with queen to c3 here a better way is g takes f4 it's really incredible that this was the best move uh because it seems so that you're weakening your uh, king uh, too much but here after g takes uh, f4 you have king to h1 and actually it's black that loses the battle on the g file maybe rook to g7 could be played but still maybe something like c takes b6 uh c takes b6 and now rook to g1 we're competing now on the g file because actually you cannot take i'm not sure if uh, kasparov considered this move but rook to d4 is actually not a possibility because you simply play rook to g7 king to g7 and now queen to c7 you see you cannot of course take with the queen <laughs> because you get rook to g1 so you have to take out with the king and now queen to c7 king to f8 uh, and now rook to g1 again that's the most important thing and look at this after rook takes e4 you have queen to d6 and it's a lost game here for for black you have only uh, one good square uh, if queen to e7 happens then you have knight to g6 the fourth so king to e8 and now rook to g8 would be a possibility you have to give up the queen because if you take of course you lose the queen on the sixth rank i'm not sure if uh, Ka uh, kasparov considered this move um 
this idea g takes f4 uh, here if you try queen to f4 it's again uh, here not such a uh, good position for black you get knight to g6 the fork on the queen and the rook and you lose also uh, some some material so as i said um it's uh it's of course hard to see this this tactical lines but uh here after g takes uh f4 i think white would have a comfortable game here queen to c3 was played by kasparov still nothing went wrong still white is better here bishop to uh, d5 we have rook to e1 we have king to g7 and now knight to g4 kicking away the queen now we have really some problems on the long diagonal this bishop is holding basically the position what we want to do is get rid of the queen and then try a pawn breakthrough with the d5 and discover attack against the king so the king uh, on g7 was a huge huge blunder the best way is simply to play um, instead of this king to g4 bishop to e4 after rook to e4 queen to f5 maybe trying to hold on to this position maybe something like rook to e1 could be played rook to f8 getting your pieces compact getting your pieces centralized getting at least some kind of new defenders into the game but uh, here uh karpov went simply uh, with the move king to g7 and he has now troubles on uh, on the long diagonal on the long dark squares here knight to g4 we have queen to f7 bishop takes rook takes and now rook takes uh queen takes e7 and now rook to e1 and i see uh that the rook comes very very active into the game uh queen to d8 and now knight to e5 again uh kasparov centralizes the knight this knight is still out of game it's simply too late to get it active somehow knight to b7 doesn't bring you so much you don't gain anything because white's activity is simply too much to handle queen to f6 we have uh, c takes b6 queen to b6 and now finally let's move g takes f4 now uh Gary Kasparov really has these attacking possibilities on the g file we have rook to d4 it seems that it's a good move but here knight to f3 simply uh, pinning the rook and it's game over knight to b3 was played trying to uh, uh trying to at least protect this rook you could take maybe uh here knight takes d4 is also a possibility but probably uh kasparov was worried about knight takes d4 knight takes d4 and then maybe some fork ideas around the square after it so that's why he first pinned also the, the knight which was the better way which was the mo more accurate way to play the game rook to b1 uh, queen to f6 and now after queen to c7 in this position uh anatoly karpov resigned queen to f7 of course we can uh, simply trade then trade off uh it's a rook versus knight and we can also take out this knight take out the queen then the knight it's again completely completely losing so really wild game but uh, i think the critical moment actually happened after the move d5 uh, here here d5 locking your position on life worse from this point on uh, the evaluation is plus one for white here uh positionally it's so bad to continue here the game for, from black's perspective i really don't like uh, to have this position when you for instance have a light square bishop and uh, you have so many centralized pawns on life worse you see how uh uh, how uh, it can be re really a problem after bishop to e6 this bishop was only a part of the pawn chain through the whole game and from this point on kasparov had a comfortable game and realized this position and got a win so it means now after game 19 anatoly, anatoly karpov was down two whole points he has to make something happen still five more rounds to play we'll see now what will happen it was still a wide wild, wild uh super match between anatoly karpov and gary kasparov so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot it had really great uh strategical and tactical elements if you want to see more from this uh super final and also some more games from gary kasparov from his career check out my series the path of glory of gary kasparov here's the link and if you want to see maybe the best chess games of all time check out my best chess games of all time series here's also the link and if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best, of course.